day, everybody. It's Greg Schnell, and I am here with the June 15th edition of uh, Market Review. Thanks for taking the time to join me. Lots in here this week. Really a tough week uh, for for all of us uh, trying to analyze market overall direction. Um, I, I've called it, the title this week is The World Waits, and I really think we have a couple of things we're waiting on. One is the Fed meeting. Um, the other is uh, we're starting to see some issues in oil, but uh, it hasn't translated into price. And then we've also got... Um, a lot of moves in currency, so really some interesting setups, and I want to fire through those today. So to find my blogs, uh, obviously it's the stockcharts.com website, and you can go to the articles tab and click on the drop-down menus, and there's three different places where I produce articles for, and uh, please feel free to hit subscribe at the bottom if you'd like those to show up in your email. Okay, to reach me, it's Greg S at stockcharts.com, Twitter at Chanel Investor, and for the agenda this week, uh, sideways week, markets didn't do anything, gold tests the highs, but I got to tell you, the reversal in the yen makes me really, really uh, pucker up here. I'm a little bit worried about that one. Commodities stall again, um, currencies, lots of reversals, which is another reason for the issue. The The big bull market uh, theme would be lumber because the S&P typically follows lumber, so that's a nice move. Um, index relative performance in focus. Arthur Hill wrote an article about uh, relative strength of the Russell compared to the S&P 500. Um, anyway, way different um, view of that than, than I have. So uh, I encourage you to check that out on the Chart Watchers article. So the NASDAQ, um, advanced decline line issues. What I wanted to show here is really this is pretty tempered uh, move higher here and we're stuck down here in this low range. So watching closely to see if we can get any sort of real thrust out of the NASDAQ uh, to go higher. So you can see the market just dribbled sideways this week. Wasn't a real big push. And again, we're up against this major resistance level here. So continuing to watch that. So for the high lows, um, you know, we had a brief kick up. We still haven't got this big bullish push that we'd like to see. And we got it on the New York Composite, but we didn't get it on the NASDAQ yet. So watching closely, um, notice this date here. This is early July, and you'll see on the New York um, a different time frame back in 2016. So that's what I want to watch for and just see if perhaps we're just setting up with different markets on different time frames. The advanced decline line uh, for the New York Composite has broken out to a new all-time high. That's bullish. And uh, mentioned it earlier uh, that we were, you know, this is looking very optimistic and the, and the breadth breakout on the net high, net new highs was pretty important. So that was a, an important thing for me. Just generally standing back looking at this market, um, you know, this does not look like that bullish was set up to me. We've bounced back, haven't been able to take out the prior highs. We've stalled in here. You can see this resistance layer right in here. And I think we're waiting on the Fed to see what happens here. And if the Fed says we're in a big bull market, I don't know what the, what the overall S&P is going to say about it. Okay, so remember on the other screen I had shown the NASDAQ uh, kicking up in July, um, and that was kind of when it finally got going. Well, the New York Composite actually kicked up um, in April of 2016, and so far we've had this kick up, and again, not followed by the NASDAQ yet, but as you can see in history, it doesn't necessarily they'll mean they'll both get going at the same time. Okay, the advanced decline line uh, for the Toronto Stock Exchange trying to break the downtrend, hardly, um, you know, shocking us with its enthusiasm, but it is trying to break the downtrend on price and on the advanced decline line itself. I think a lot of that is due to the gold stocks trying to rally this week. For the Toronto, for the high lows, really no action here. We've got 12, of them, 12 more highs than new lows. That's not that great. So looking at a couple of things, this is Alexander Elder's high-low, and you can see it's moderately bullish. It's in the 500 area, but again, um, you know, this is the kind of profile we want. This is the kind of profile we have um, muted, let's call it that. doesn't mean the market can't rally during that period. It just means that the, um, the thrust behind the rally is a lot more suspect. 
Okay, this is the NIMO McClellan oscillator and this black line across the top is comparing this area to this area on the chart. And you can see we've come down and dipped right around this 200 level. And just in in past terms, when, when that has happened, that's been a pretty nice place to get on board sometimes. And so you'll see in here, like this market move was pretty much sideways for the next two months, whereas this move here, um, once it started to turn up, was a really nice place. This move here was a really nice place to get on board. Um, interesting, the slope of the summation for the relatively um, passive uh, gain here and then a very passive slope on the summation index but a really nice thrust here so um, can't use the the slope of this as the guiding tool behind how good the rally is but I will say at least we're heading higher here on the summation index and on the McClellan oscillator so uh, we finished off the highs for the week we're down here around the 20 level uh, but again we we need to keep in mind that this is kind of a normal period for the McClellan oscillator and, and these sudden spikes up so high usually are reversals um, when they finally conquer out here. So this was a big move down initiation thrust. Now we've come down. Now what we're watching for is can we get enough momentum to break through this downtrend? And again, the New York composite. Okay, so the summation index, this takes that same chart that we just saw uh, a zoomed in view of on the last one and takes it back 15 years and you get a feeling for how high we were and now the question is we've dipped down to this 200 level which is the same type of thing we might have done back in 09 and you know that was still good enough for a rally. The real question is this week we stalled and so we're watching closely to see what goes on. I would say you have to lean bullish as all of these summation indexes on the weekly have reversed the downtrend and are trying to move higher. Okay, um, big picture for the NASDAQ 100. We have broken this uptrend line and we're trying to get back above it. So that would be important or even get a new one established would be fine. But we're just not seeing that. Um, this week was a mar very marginal uptrend in the um New York or in the NASDAQ 100 and one of the reasons that we're seeing that is the semiconductors really had a tough week this week and we're going to talk more about that in a bit. Okay I don't want to spend a lot of time on the bullish percent indexes let's just say that they're not really um, up, up at a level so you know even though we've been rallying for a couple of weeks already remember the end of May was kind of the low um, we're still only barely ticking up here at 46 percent and the percentage of stocks moving above their 200 day moving average barely off the lows but still well below 50 percent in both cases so not that great for the Nasdaq 100 this is thrust back up to 60 obviously we want it up in the 70s and then uh, we're at 67% of the stocks were above their 200 day moving average. Not bad, but again, um, you know, really want to see it get up in this bullish territory and we haven't seen that yet. Okay, um, the NYA bullish percent index, what we see here is this is uh, at 50%. And the percentage of stocks above the 200-day moving average back above 50% at 55% level. Hardly enthusiastic, but we'll keep watching that to see if it gets any better. We moved up marginally last week on uh, percentage of stocks above the 200. Okay, for the S&P 500, we're at 62%. Obviously, that's bullish. And 63%, percent we got two-thirds of the stock above their 200-day moving average. The real question we have to watch for, we got down to that 50% level and it bounced off here. We want to see a lot more continued thrust here, so that's what we're working towards. And again, we've got reason for fireworks next week with the Fed and quantitative easing, or quantitative easing, uh, quadruple witching, which is on Friday. So those are both um, important things to watch. Toronto Stock Exchange, bullish percent index hung in around 60% with a marginal improvement this week from 57 to 59. And the real uh, enthusiasm there was showing up in the gold sector. And the Canadian Stock Exchange um, had over 60% of their stocks move above the 200-day moving average, so that's pretty bullish. The real issue you can see is that this is kind of where the market has topped out for the last two years. Um, so really need to see a trend change there if we're going to start making some higher highs in this market. Bullish percent index for energy, even with um, torpedoes or... or um, 
missiles hitting um, crude tankers in the Strait of Hormuz, oil prices failed to react in any meaningful way. Um, the bullish percent index of oil stocks didn't react. XLE didn't react. Um, so this is just, you know, we're, we're not seeing anything telling us um, that this is about to get better here. And one of the worst things that came out um, recently in the last day or two was the um, the International Energy Agency basically saw the slowest growth in oil demand in many years. And the problem with that isn't that, you know, price will collapse or whatever. Um, the OPEC nations are, are trying to manage that. I think the bigger issue is is that it's just going to keep money away from investing in oil. And uh, so these energy stocks are going to be continuing to be strapped for for capital to go forward. So that's one of the things we're watching. In terms of my uh, MACD on the bullish percent index here, you can see it's below zero. And we want to watch this um, as it pulls back here. Now that you're below zero, you've got to start being a little bit more optimistic. But uh, again, there's nothing telling, pointing to that in the energy space. I thought we might get some bounce with the hostilities in the Middle East, but we haven't got anything. So um, continues to say, if if uh, good news can't push oil prices higher, bad news probably isn't going to push it higher either. And um, gold this week struck out to make a new 52-week high very clearly didn't close up there, pulled back again from that ledge. And, and the bullish percent index on uh, for the gold miners got above 50% for the first time since, whatever, June of last year, and that was on a decline. This time we're on the, on the way up. And what we want to watch for here, obviously, is the, the gold miners are trying to get a push above here, and they're very close to taking out new 18-month highs. That would be really exciting to see. And then the the ratio of gold miners to gold is trying to break out as well. So we like to see all that in the top right-hand corner. Um, I will put one, uh, one flare against that, a caution flare, and that is that the yen reversed hard this week, or looks like it wants to reverse hard this week. So on this bullish percent gold miners index, I have a horizontal line here, and I'm just going to put it at 50% right now. And the point I want to make for that is at this horizontal level, what we need to see is uh, getting above this 50%. So we're right at the boundary level. You can see on everything else here, we're very close to prior highs. On the miners, we're very close to prior highs. And on the ratio, we're very close to prior highs. So unless something really starts to accelerate here, um, gold is up against resistance and we just need to be aware of that. Uh, so I was liking the gold trade. I have the gold trade on. I've got uh, positions in there. The real thing I'm watching for, the real big thing I need to see is that breakout on all of these. And it would help me if the yen continued to go higher. That would be a concern if it doesn't. Okay, this is the uh, quantitative easing. And you can see we are quantitative easing. I think I've said that multiple times now. Um, this is the quadruple witching date on Friday. And what we're watching for is we got the Fed meeting before that. Uh, but we also have this uh, big options expiration where quarterly options also expire. So we've got lots of things um, that, that we're focused on here. And that has been a meaningful date change. So back in September, it marked the top. Back in December, it marked the low. Um, you know, we we struggled to go any further for almost a month after that or two or three weeks after that. And then we rose up from that level. But again, we haven't done much. Um, you know, this is 2800 to 2900. I guess that's, that's okay. It's a uh, 4% or something. But the, I think the big thing is, is that we've just struggled here since and haven't been able to make any headway. So I'm looking for this to either be a decisive move down or a decisive breakout after the options expiration. So uh, I want to watch that very closely. And again, this is the Fed meeting date. So that's coming up on Wednesday. So that'll be hotly watched. And again, the real question is if they get bullish and say the market doesn't need any help here, uh, will it sell off? And if they get bearish and say the market needs help here, um, 
will that scare investors? So it's a real mixed bag. Um, watch that closely. I did uh, see some uh, Twitter information, some analysis where people had gone back and said what happened when the Fed started to lower interest rates and most people felt that was a pretty bullish thing and the S&P had responded over the next 60 days or something like that. So again, want to keep that in mind. But um, at this point, uh, I think there's a lot of hands at play with the global trade alignment and a lot of slowing. Uh, one of the big things that happened this week was JP Morgan said their, their, I think it's their business sentiment or business confidence index had slowed dramatically from over 50% to, um, to 18 or something like that. So that was kind of a, a big concern. I, I might have those numbers way wrong. So uh, just go look at it instead. Um, I think that's that's one of the things that we need to keep in mind is there's a lot of slowing in conviction here. Okay, so for the month, the S&P is now up 1%. And again, it kind of was there last week, but we haven't gained much since. So and looking at the S&P year to date, um, still up that 15% range. We have been higher. We're just struck around here. And this blue line, again, if we just push this back, this brings into some, some of the other highs we've had here. So we're stuck in this range and watching very closely. Okay, weekly outside bars chart. I just try to keep track of those. And what we had last week was a series of outside bars. And then this week we... We had, um, you know, a doji where basically we closed pretty close to where we opened with no real uh, moves, tested higher and tested lower. I think, you know, the good news is we closed higher than last week, but in some cases, this is called an evening star setup where you have a big run up and then it stays there and we drop down. So watching closely as we head into this Fed week with some more details. Okay, uh, so the pullback on the S&P was roughly 8%, and the rise so far has been 7%. Um, trying to get this back, we're at this 2900 level, and we keep testing up here. Again, uh, can we make it through? I think the the concern I have is there's been no buyers showing up for work here, the volume declining every day. And we were very low at a billion and a half um, for the S&P. And if we just put a horizontal line on that, Um, okay, horizontal line, and we want to put it at, what was the Friday volume, 1.56, and we're going to do that in black, just to give us a, a line that we can see. So the big issue is, is that we don't get volume this week very often, this is um, around the Thanksgiving period, but... Um, without question, we're definitely on low or slow volume. So um, the world is waiting to see wh which way we're going. And again, this this uh, volume level is very unenthusiastic so far. So um, anytime you get a volume that just kind of puckers up, you want to watch closely because sometimes it could be a springboard like it was in 2018. Um, very slow in the last week of the year. And you can see in... in uh, 2018, that was not the case. It was exactly the opposite. But when you get low volume, it's an important place to watch for. So we'll keep doing that. Uh, but that, that I think, was a meaningful uh, clue that we're getting down to really light levels. Okay, distribution days for the NASDAQ. Nothing really going on here. Every day's been less, so we haven't had any new distribution days show up. And we also haven't had any new um, bullish ones where we have higher volume on an up day. Every day's been less and less and less. So uh, really an interesting quagmire here as, as the volume lightens. Now, uh, this is the NASDAQ 100 on a relative... Uh, relative strength chart compared to the S&P 500. And you can see that for the most part, just in general, when we're trending higher, that's bullish. And when we're not, um, so in here, that's kind of a point where we want to watch for. So I usually like to look for, excuse me, for changes in relative strength between the indexes. And we don't have that yet. But you can see this downtrend in relative strength and then an inflection point, And that kind of marked the change for us. 
it's not a daily thing. It's a bigger picture thing. And the one thing I look at here is this two-year trend line. If that started to be broken, I think that would be a big deal. There was a trend line that came in here below these lows and broke in here. And you could see that pretty much was a, a good clue to be careful here. We also had a short trend line here for a couple of months that broke and that marked that top. So again, it's not an instant thing, but it's a bigger picture thing. The one big picture we've got here is a four-year uptrend that we want to watch basically off the 2016 lows. And we're, we're heading into the fourth year of that price action, and we want to see if that's going to hold. And I think if the, if the NASDAQ um, was to start significantly underperforming the growth stocks that we've all been watching, um, will change focus dramatically. So that's an interesting place on the charts. For the New York Composite, we're back above the 20-month moving average. This has been an absolute um, difficult indicator to follow. And, and the reason for that, uh, moving above the 10-month moving average, is you can see back in here, it, di it dipped down once, and then the second time when it broke, it was a big deal. Well, here we have dipped, rose, dipped, tried to go, dipped, got above, pulled back, got above... It's been much more choppy, and in 2007, it was a pretty clear line. When it broke, it was a pretty big deal. So anyway, it's been a lot harder to figure out which way this market wants to go, and we also saw the same sort of sideways price action in 2014-15, and that ended up breaking lower. Currently, we look like we're going higher, but we still have a series of lower highs in place. Okay, uh, this is zoomed in on the last few months of that chart. Um, and what we see is we're trying to rally back up to this trend line. We did have a brief close in uh, April above that, and then May obviously was the switch back down. So this looked very bullish. This was a pretty ugly candle that wiped out a couple months of work. And now we're trying to rally back up. Haven't done that yet. Haven't finished that rally and got back to prior highs. Okay, here's the Russell and... Um, one of the things that I noted or that I've been watching closely is when the Russell underperforms. Um, usually that's, that's quite important. Um, Arthur Hill did an article on it in uh, Chart Watchers today, and he used a series of rate of change indicators and that kind of thing. I use a trend line. I, I like it when a trend line starts to break. In this case, the trend line broke here. And then that was bullish. So I wouldn't you. So he has he has done his analysis with the rate of change indicator, and I encourage you to read it. Different ways of looking at it. But currently, um, again, yeah, when the Russell's oversold, you want to buy it, but you don't want to buy it until the trend line breaks, and that would be something that I would be looking for. And it doesn't have to be the total trend line, but in this case, this little down sloping one is not a bad place to get on board. Down sloping one here, not a bad place to get on board down sloping one here and we're waiting to get on board so anyway watching that uh, to see how it works uh, 1450 here for a big horizontal red line um, on the Russell we're up against the down sloping 40 week moving average in general that's just a bearish place so we still need to be careful um, I, I fully realize why everybody wants to try and get bullish it's a lot easier to be bullish and most money managers that um, don't want to sell anything, um, are, are going to be bullish. What I think we need to watch for, again, this momentum turning up here at zero would be a very welcome sight. That would be bullish. You can see back here in 2017 when this turned up, and 2018 when this turned up, that would be good. When it turns up right around zero after being below, this is usually a really nice place to get on board. The other side of that says the market's so weak on the first rally down, the, the second rally is your best chance to sell. So um, we're fighting it out here, and especially this grind sideways where the PPO uh, is below zero. The histogram is negative, but not really changing. So, uh, you know, in this case, it was pretty much accelerating lower and then ground sideways for a while. Watching very closely, because if sentiment gets any worse, I think this thing falls apart and we go down hard. Um, but again, we're starting to see some bullish things like the net new highs that we saw early on in this um, video. Okay, so the Russell again, just big picture zoomed out here, sitting above its trend line. Back in 2016, it dipped below it and then it was off into the races. Um, they had a downsloping 
40 week moving average it got back above it and off to the races we got above it failed came back down and now we're testing it again you can see we failed right at it on the way up here so just keep watching this i think it's a pretty important place on the chart and if we lose this relative strength area i think or this um Russell at this 40 week um, that would really indicate some big issues and again on the commodities as I pointed out in the opening they they struggled this week and one of the concerns I have is is we had some big currency changes that I need to get to quickly here Canadian market hasn't got back above its 50-day moving average yet so just wobbling between the two moving averages um, you know getting below it typically is resistance on the way down so we'll just watch and see if it's got any strength gold would help there um, the xvg the value line uh, what we see here uh, this is pulled down and we have a down sloping moving average where we bounced a little bit didn't gain much this week after the big bounce last week and we are below zero here so an important place to watch and you could see back in 2000 1999 through 2000 we just got to zero and every time we rolled over in 2007 we got below we bounced back up and then we kept wandering below here we've been below for a while and we're back below it again so we're just watching very closely okay don't have time to get into those indexes right now so let's go down to the u.s dollar and the point i want to make here is last week the u.s dollar hinted and closed below this upsloping trend line this week what did it do it made a lower low and a higher close and tried to rally now if it can't get above 50 percent of this bar it's still pretty bearish um, you could even expect it to go you know up a little higher but i think the bigger issue we want to watch for is which way does this us dollar want to go um, it it looked looked awfully weak last week and then this this attempted rally this week puts everything into question but if it was going to roll back over and break down that would be helpful I will say that the uh, Special K, Martin Prink Special K, broke this one-year uptrend line and rolled over here after breaking this big downtrend line. So just when we want to start getting um, bullish on the dollar, it's rolled over and it's now broken a one-year uptrend line. That's just hard work for us technicians. Um, here we are at the 200-day moving average trying to hold that. And again, we're stuck between this 97 and uh, 97.5 area i think the the big thing here to watch is if if we can't get back above that area and roll all the way down here we've got a lot of room down to 92 cents or something like that and that would give our commodities a chance to rally if you're interested in those okay here's a zoomed in view and you can see on the daily chart um, trying to bounce off this 200 day moving average and we have the 65 day moving average and we're just sitting pretty much on it right now the ppo did break the uptrend which was one of the reasons that i was kind of getting more bullish on commodities was the dollar looked like it wanted to break down the histogram's already improving on the daily and again i want to watch the weekly more than the daily um the the short-term fluctuations are just too hard to map for any style, any style of long-term investing. But uh, you know that was a big push on Friday to to move back up. Okay, the euro. So the euro last week had this big bullish push that we can see here, and then this week had an inside week where it was a lower high but a higher low, and then we had a lower uh, close. So the prior close was way up here, and now we're down here. When we see that on a chart, we had this nice downtrend, broke out, closed near the highs, and what did we do this week? Gave most of it back. So uh, really throws into question whether or not this breakout's gonna hold, and obviously if the, if the euro's gonna roll over again here, that's gonna make the US dollar higher because it has such a big weighting on the basket. Um, just looking in on this euro wider picture here, you see this horizontal line around 112, a little higher, but trying to get back above it. And we've also got the 65 period moving average right there. So um, again, this is couldn't be trickier here after the breakout to roll back over. Um, looking at the daily chart wider picture you just see the the frustration in around this 112 113 layer um, here we've been jogging back and forth so this looks um, corrective not impulsive and then impulse i would think would be to the upside we haven't got that yet
One of the concerns I have is my Swedish Krona that I like to use to help me with the Euro broke out last week and gave it all back and actually closed lower than last week, um, last week's open and the prior week. So this to me looks like a failed breakout right as this trend line is coming into play in momentum. If this rolls over right here, we could see uh, a big move down in the Euro. British pound tried to break back above the three-year trend line here, failed and rolled back down for its lowest close of the group. Back here with the closes from late December. And again, um, you know, British pound, if it's going to start really dropping here, we've got this uptrended momentum and we're testing that line right now. So it could be that the pound is one of the things that really starts to fail here. Um looking at the Japanese yen. So the, the gold price of gold follows the yen pretty close and we've seen gold break out here, which was one of the reasons I wanted the yen to break out. And so the yen pushed up and last week pushed up very high, um, nice, and it still closed in the top half of the bar, so that was okay. This week opened lower, tested back up to the prior close and then uh, um, closed down pretty much near last week's low. So I would say not a very good bar, looks much more like a reversal than anything bullish. And gold was up against prior resistance here, as we can see on this, uh, comparing the peaks. So that makes it very iffy. If the yen is going to roll back over while gold is up near these highs, and you can see the yen is near the trend line, where gold rolled over twice. Um, this is um, another important flux point for us. So stay focused if you have gold shares and and you're trading them. Don't let them get away. If you've got some profits, make sure you've got a method to lock in and keep them. If we go into a daily view on this yen, what you see here is this sideways chop now for two weeks. So since breaking out um, near the first of the month, hasn't done anything it just sideways chopped but we finished near the low end of the range um, Tuesday we had tested lower rallied up and then this was kind of the low close for the week so not really great okay Canadian dollar also failed broke out above this down sloping trend line reversed and we made a lower a higher high and a higher low but closed at the low of the bar and very close to this horizontal trend line going back three years what makes that ugly is that Australia also did and closed at three-year lows here's the Canadian dollar on a daily basis and you can see that's not a very bullish candle in here and fell back below the 65 day moving average so we spent three months trying to get through it we finally got through it and we gave it back in a week so not very good Aussie dollar weekly you can see this chart finished drilling down in the bottom corner here we have had a lower close in early May uh, but nothing you know again looking left on the chart you know failing at this horizontal level at 70 and now heading lower and finishing at the low of the bar suggests to me that we could go a lot lower on the Aussie now, for the Aussie stock market, it continued to break out to new highs. So um, I'm, I'm surprised that this bullish trend would continue if, every, if the currency's um, so out of favor. But I guess if you're an export nation, lowering your Aussie dollar helps your exports. So that pushes up the stock market. Okay, here's your uh, daily chart. Uh, again, PPO rolled over at zero. We're testing these lows after... After pulling back down, getting up, retesting the breakout or the breakdown, uh, we fell. Any sort of an uptrend line or downtrend line we had here is broken again. And so a failed breakout usually uh, gives you a more exaggerated move in the other direction. So watching that terribly close. Um, emerging markets. So right at the trend line on this, going back a year and a half, need to see what this wants to do but look at the price action it closed so big price bar last two weeks wide ranging moved up this week tested higher and closed right at the low of the bar so not very bullish and the ppo was right at zero and i mentioned here you know if this turns up higher you want to be long commodities well if this just fakes us out and rolls over at zero that is a horrific place to be long commodities and so we're, we're in a bit of a, a tricky situation here. 
Okay, gold is obviously, you know, these two charts don't track too bad, uh, but here gold is clearly off on its own and the currency doesn't kind of agree with gold. Here the currency kept grinding lower even while gold was trying to make higher highs and uh, ultimately it was the direction of the currency that told the truth. So um, just very careful here if we start to see this price of, or the emerging market currencies roll over again, that's going to be a big deal. LIBOR continues to point lower. That's just not that bullish, kind of directing the two-year. HYG is testing the 10-week moving average this week, and it was up, so that's bullish. Um, what we have is a lower high in momentum so far, so we really need to kind of see this make higher highs and higher highs. Um, obviously, as we work our way back up, that's part of the deal. So um, got to get through this resistance at 86.5, and we have to get back above the 10-week moving average. This is unadjusted price, just to make sure everybody knows what that means. We have taken the dividends out of the chart. Okay, um, the Treasury bond, same thing. This is still heading higher, and we broke out here, and it's been very bullish. RSI is extremely overbought up here at 748 Okay, the ratio of HYG to IEF is clearly drilling lower, and usually what that means, it's risk off when we're heading down and risk on when we're heading up. So we're, we're drilling on the lows here, trying to make a little bit of a bounce, but that would be the real question mark, is which way does this want to break? And if it's going to continue lower, um, and we're probably going to get some answers from that with the Fed this week. Um, LQD, so the corporate bonds has broken out and one of the things we noted with the, the RSI was up around 72, well now we're at 75, that's pretty smoking high, so um, if we just take this index and put a horizontal line, uh, there we go, at 75.39 the current level and uh, we'll go with red and put that on the chart should show up right up here and as you can see we have one instance in here where it got slightly higher and didn't get higher back in there so we're going back to 07 and we only had one instance and that marked the final high of getting up to this level so my caution on corporate bonds two-year continues to go lower and you know this zoom in this shows uh, uh, from late 2017 this is just like an absolute um, mountaintop here where it's rolled over the other side and again that um, high in momentum and the high in price typically mark the high in the stock market sooner or later it got a little bit lower we're at that level so I'm still wondering if we're gonna hold out here somehow I don't have an answer to that um, but once we got to the 09 low um, this the two year kept falling, and again, there was a lot of financial issues going on then. Um, but the market could start to rise from that. The base in the two year was also when we had the quantitative easing, and that kind of pushed us all through this period here of the initial. And then we've surged on since then. This is clearly rolled over by anybody's imagination, and I think it's a pretty important place to watch. So um, I don't think the bond market's given me the all clear on a big bull market in stocks yet. Um, TIP, this black line, heading up and has started to roll over, as you can see on the panel here. I have West Texas crude in orange, and that is clearly rolled over, and gold is the only thing kind of still pointing higher. So, again, more suspicion for gold with the tip chart rolling over. Okay, um, the TLT just going sideways here so that's meaningful um, just says kind of the enthusiasm either needs time to consolidate um, so something to watch here's the municipal bond fund that I watch just to see um, the action and typically it helps me find uh, major tops in the bond market uh, like in the the tenure and that kind of thing you can see we, we've just pulled over here a little bit. We're at 1312. We had highs of 1350 and 1357. Let's just call it up in the range of where highs would be. Um, PPO hasn't quite crossed yet, but if that was to cross, I'd expect a relatively quick move down, and we'd probably expect to see that on the um, uh, on the bond market as well. So uh, starting to see those yields 
roll up and the price roll down, just to make sure everybody's clear on the direction I mean there. Uh, here we have the the 30 year, sorry, the 10 year treasury monthly chart. And we so far we've really got a doji this month after a big push down. So this looks more like an exhaustion move. But you can also see our uptrend in PPO momentum here. We're getting close to that level. If this was going to start to bounce, this is where we'd expect it to. And again, there's a lot of downward thrust here. So as these other days fall off a 10-month moving average, uh, sorry, as they fall off the PPO scale here, um, you know, we'll watch to see how it bottoms in here. But this is quite clearly coming down to this line. And when it does that, we'll really watch for that for a major reversal point and see if that gets us there. The the RSI is at its major trend line going back 10 years. So that's a pretty important inflection point to look for as well. Okay, the 10 year again didn't do much in the last two weeks here. It's just kind of held after this exhaustion move. Everything's drilled down into the bottom right hand corner. Uh, so it feels to me like it's a little overdone already. Um, the five year bounced this week a little bit, um, tried to get back up. It, it did make new lower lows, so it's not great. Um, again, you have this huge push down, and then the real question is, as it bottoms, does it, you know, um, how much pressure is on it at this point? And I think the real, you know, this this looks pretty exhaustive to me, and look where the PPO is going back, way back. Uh, we're near some pretty major lows, so I think um, time to be very cautious if you're if you're expecting uh, bond prices to continue rising. Now, here is the two-year, and what you can see on the two-year is a pullback here, and we've clearly broken the uptrend line. What we saw back in 2007 and 8 was we fell hard, had a rally, fell really hard, and then rallied back up. Now, my question is, is that where we are here, where we get the rally back up to, I don't know if we even test up here, or do we just test the moving average as it rolls over, so it's pointing down now. Um, as that moving average comes down, are we going to just bounce back up into it, and maybe that's a place for a weaker market? Don't know. Um, Okay, just want to continue through this. Look at this short-term bond yields. Um, this has just plummeted. Uh, so we've been watching this to see if it would hold the six-month level. Well, this has just fallen off the charts. So while this is dropping so readily, it's really making... Um, we've been talking about the normalization of the yield curve. And um, it'll come up on a chart right away here. But the one thing I want to... Uh, suggest is that three month uh, falling really really hard now is starting to normalize that yield curve so another reason to be careful okay based on the MACD so this is the 30 year uh, bond weekly chart look at this big uptrend we briefly broke below it now we've come back the other way because the MACD is based on price we're almost back up to some of the previous highs in here in the long period before the 2009 financial crisis um, where we had really wide-ranging swings so this looks like you know time to start thinking about a reversal the one thing i would say is on the ppo up here it doesn't look anywhere near as extreme it's only at one and three quarter percent and you know we could move up all the way near four percent to be at a real extreme so this suggests you know don't get too bearish and it, it doesn't usually move up in a straight line as you can see most of these have some big wobbles in them this one in here from 2001 to 2003 was a jagged road um, higher so keep that in mind anyway it doesn't look too extreme to me from a big picture uh, okay I'm gonna just move off bonds so I can get on to some of the other stuff I want to cover Oh, these are the spreads that I mentioned. And again, looking over here on the right-hand side, this, uh, you know, they were all very close together here and they're all starting to spread out now. The one year is still inverted compared to the three and the five uh, or the two and the three. Just need to shrink this chart down one page. Um, so we've got the two year in red, the three year in green. So we'd, we'd expect the three year to be above the red and we'd expect the... Uh, one year in blue to be below. So they haven't quite normalized yet, but again, 
the three month, I haven't put on this chart because it just throws the whole scale out. Um, it, it's quite a wild look. Uh, I tried it earlier. I think I've shown you this a couple of times before, but on this IRX, and we need to just add a color to it to make it different. So we're going to pick, I don't know, I don't have a pink up there, so let's go pink. But you can see it just kind of takes over the chart. So it doesn't really help us. So I'm going to leave that off of there. Anyway, the uh, 10 year to the 30 year has broken out through the top. And if we uh, look at a zoomed in view of, of things, this is the five year compared to the 30 year and it's broken out. So there's a lot of reasons here to be suspicious about this stock market. Um, putting in a final high and again the pause this week in the overall markets was one of those okay the transports um, that doesn't look that bullish just kind of stuck in the middle of the range okay transports weekly um, trying to bounce here off a low uh, full stochastic it's right at zero so this would be a meaningful place to bounce if it can start to go again um, Looking at the airlines, and I can zoom this back out. Looking at the airlines, we're stuck in the middle of the sideways range, so nothing there. Looking at uh, the weekly version of the airline charts, we've got a full stow buy signal, but again, you're just in the middle of chop, and we don't have any trend break on the PPO, so it's probably something I'd avoid. Railroads, this is the one that bothered me the most when I went through my charts this week. This has been uh, a big, big bull. And look at what it did all week here. It basically spent the whole week going lower on railroads. And now our PPO rolled over at zero and is moving down. When we saw that in December, that's when the stock market really started to accelerate lower. So there's not a lot of things I like about the shape of this. And I don't like the fact that we're starting to test this uptrend on the relative strength again. We do need to hold this 2325 level. I, th I think if that breaks down, I'd probably uh, clear out my, I I'd be very close to, um, you know, trying to increase my cash levels. Let's put it that way. Okay, we do have a sell signal on the PPO. And my note here, going back a long time ago, next high has potential to be final high. So we've got the high in the PPO. We now have a signal line cross. We've got a negative histogram going on for the first time let me just put on the zoom thumbnail so we can just get a little more detail there so this is you know starting to speed up to the downside again we failed at the 10 week after going below it so this is a pretty risky place here now a bullish market bounce here is right here and we turn and we go higher on a full stochastic if we break below this 50% uh, level and we're at whatever, 54, um, watch this closely because if we start accelerating lower here, that is a real market correction for me. So as much as I want to be bullish, that is not one of the things that is showing up as great. Okay. And again, the railroads have been outperforming for a long time, so that's good. Trucking tried to put in a bounce this week from a deeply oversold level coming back up into resistance below both moving averages. Full stochastic is on a buy signal. But again, uh, with the resistance overhead here, watch closely. We'll see if there's anything to it, but uh, worried about that kind of stuff. Okay, the auto sector, there's a couple of charts in here that look better than others. Briefly, Ford... Um, oh, that's down farther. So we'll look at it later. Here's the weekly. Uh, the one thing that we're thinking about is this is kind of a major level of support for the auto sector. The PPO hasn't started to turn up yet, and we still have a big um, negative presence here. So it's hard to get too excited, but if you're a day trader or a short-term trader, maybe there's something there for us. Okay, the broker dealers, this chart looks terrible. Um, it really broke down. I'm, I'm going to switch it up and just show you on my regular chart here. Um, one of the things you see is this PPO rolling over at zero. Like that's just so not good. And we've gone to a negative. So it's below the signal line now. We've broken this uptrend. We back tested it. We're below both moving averages or at them. Um, so really difficult here. We're below the 50 level, so either we bounce right here, right now, or this thing turns down hard, and I expect a big market correction if that happens. 
Okay, utilities. Um, again, you know, big wide swinging week last week looked like a bit of a sell candle on the top. Well, this week we got a hammer candle saying I want to go higher and look what's happening on my momentum. It's breaking out to the upside here for the first time. That's just bullish and, and we have to be very, very careful. Okay, industrial sector. Looking here, we're rolling over, stalling at the 10 week moving average. Got, you know, this would be a, a lower high in momentum if this rolled down here. So very very high friction place and back in 2018 it was the bounce back into the 10 week that continued to stall it so uh, I would just say keep watching here we got a triple top going on that never happens remember uh, <laughs> that's a joke because some people think triple tops don't happen well they could happen anywhere even in this particular chart I would say they happened on the socks going back in here Okay, so the, you can see the semiconductors gap down on Friday was relatively brutal. We have a relative strength uptrend here that I want to uh, be very careful of. And if you look here when the relative strength uptrend broke, you know, this is August, September, even if you use the horizontal level coming into uh, September, October, when it started to break down relative strength underperformance, that was a big deal. Again, that NASDAQ chart I showed earlier, um, we're, we're starting to test that trend line on the overall NASDAQ, so that's a bigger issue. And we have this uptrend going on here. Looks very suspicious. Um, we're back testing this downtrending line here. If it doesn't hold, it's also going to give up the 200-day moving average, which is flat to down. PPO below zero, if this rolls over below zero, again, we saw that in, in uh, September, October, that was a meaningful place to be cautious. So a lot of things started to red flag here with the semis, you know, last week when we talked, they were still climbing. Well, this week, uh, they literally made a, a mountaintop on here, a church spire, whatever you want to call it, a summit, <laughs> um, a bugaboo peak. We have a peak in Canada called bugaboo peak. You can Google it. It's a pretty nice looking peak. Anyway, uh, let's get into the commodities because there's lots there. Okay, CRB, um, we're still making lower lows and lower highs. We haven't got back to last month's close. Um, the US dollar continues to stall right around this 97.5 level that we've been looking at for a year. Um, so nothing there. This week on the CRB, we made an inside week. So we had a higher low and a lower high and a slightly higher close. That's somewhat bullish. I want to temper that with the fact that oil couldn't respond to um, too much. DBC didn't really get anywhere near bullish here. We have the potential for a PPO uptrend to start in commodities. So again, when I say the world waits, it's literally all of these things are just on friction lines. And if they could start to break out to the upside, that would help. But a lot of them look rough and, and things like that semiconductor chart suggest more caution than not. West Texas crude, that doesn't look like an uptrend right here. This is pretty much straight down. Nat gas, I will say I have some feeling for uh, going long nat gas here. Uh, maybe not even nat gas stocks, just long nat gas, but it's very volatile. So um, if you choose to take that trade, think about it hard and know where your stops are. Uh, heating oil uh, sideways for three weeks. Gasoline still dropping a little bit. All of these, the eggs, they just took off. Look at corn fly, um, soybean broke the, the one-year downtrend, and wheat is actually pushing up above this horizontal level here at 535. So really, really nice to get that going. Gold and silver, gold again stalling right up near resistance, silver rolling back over and failing to hold uh, the 10-week. So trying to hold the 10-week is probably a better way to say that. But I think you can clearly see the issue here. If this is going to stall right here after what we were hoping was going to be a big breakout to the upside, this is a pretty meaningful place to watch. Copper sideways for three weeks here, much like uh, heating oil. And then we saw the same thing in aluminum, no real price action there. So um, industrial metals, I thought we're going to start to bounce on a weakening U.S. dollar and that reversal is um, stalling that idea. Sugar and coffee. Sugar breaks out through the two-year trend line. Coffee fails to hold its breakout through the trend line. Uh, cocoa broke out again. Um, nice. This is just a really joggy chart. Uh, nothing that makes it easy to trade, that's for sure. And then uh, cotton down here drilling on the three-year lows. 
medical marijuana, this one's really important. Okay, first things first, let's talk about the scooter. So this compares the price action of this ETF against other ETFs. And you can see during the big bull market phase, it ran up for a long time and then fell down and that was a good place to avoid. Then it ran up for a shorter time. And this was actually when the Canadian stock uh, Canadian government approved uh, recreational marijuana and on Weed Wednesday everything sold off. Then we had a brief rally and it kind of came up and in end of February, remember the stock market went all the way up to end of April, but at the end of February weed stocks kind of topped and have gently been declining. Now the full stochastic is near the lows, the PPO is near zero. This relative strength uptrend is under threat and you know whether you use a slightly up up sloping one or a horizontal one here that would give it a little bit more room the scooter ranking tells us that we haven't got into the overbought on uh, any of these rallies here and look at the low interest showing up in the volume data so until we get some sort of volume spike i think we're probably in for more mellow times with um, marijuana names coal uh, downturn again this week well below the 10 week steel tried to rally but uh, when you see it on a, a bar chart it wasn't anything great and i think it was an inside week if i remember correctly and lithium and uh, rare earth metals nothing so uh, really a tough week all the way across this sector okay i'm going to skip these let's get down into the energy xle that doesn't look like any sort of a buy signal based on tanker fires and that kind of stuff. Um, we do have um, the momentum trying to move up here, but again, we're well below zero and it doesn't feel like we have any real power um, coming out of this move. Uh, refiners are sitting near zero, so nothing going on there. Frackers um, made lower lows again, right near the lows for the year on the weekly chart continuing to push down so uh, again tough in the energy space i thought we might get some kick but we didn't um x west texas is rolling over at zero I, again i thought this might do some um we'd have some positive price action with the big hammer candle last week and really high volume um so far we came back and we're testing the lows of the hammer candle so that's not very bullish okay um big picture on crude just pretty weak nothing really looks good there okay let's go down to natural gas and the point i want to make on this nat gas chart is we had an inside week here again after breaking below so we broke below support tested down here i tried to get long got stopped out of my trade up here and then this is now broken down with another inside week so this looks good and we also have the setup here where the the momentum indicator looks like it might kick in somewhat similar to 2015 perhaps where we're down at a deep level and it starts to to kick in so that's some place to look okay let's get straight to gold because we're running out of time um, oh, here's the steel chart and again the point i want to make on this it, it was just a nothing week we got to the 40 week installed uh, gold okay um, trying to break out here pushed up and this week we just had a spinning top week where uh, big tails on both sides and nothing in the middle uh, so slightly below last week's close and zoomed in look at this price bar on friday for for the commodity uh, continuous contract of gold this is a very 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 bearish candle um, as we hit prior highs so that's concern and i just want to get down into gld and and the point i want to make here is look at how this is testing prior highs so uh, again be very cautious here if this doesn't hold this is a lower high in momentum and you want to be out of this trade and then gdx same thing um, it actually responded really well and held up near the highs all the way into the close so that's one holding promise for um, for the miners and the other thing is the ppo is in the best shape of any of these charts so we want to see this continue to rally if it doesn't it's a great place to leave and lock in profits lastly a big bounce in lumber and I've mentioned this in a couple articles, so try and read those articles. But uh, that was a big push. And again, uh, lumber price moving up is usually coincident with the S&P 500 moving up. So that's great. Thanks for your time. Have a good week. Bye-bye.